In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us begin with a little review of what we discussed yesterday at Mass. We are called to restore all things in Christ. We are called to conform ourselves to Christ. We are something that needs to be restored in Christ. He is the first and the last, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And thus, we need to be exposed to Christ regularly to make this conformity to Christ possible. And the Holy Mass makes this possible. The Holy Mass is where we can do this. It is a recapitulation of the life of Christ. Amazing, beautiful, mysterious. So yesterday we went through the Mass, at least in just kind of touching on various points, and we covered the Mass of the Catechumens, the public life of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today, let us take up this topic again, where we left off at the Offertory, the Mass of the Faithful. Now the Offertory, well, that's where, where we enter into the Last Supper, And the Last Supper was more or less hidden. Very few people were there. So it's done in silence. It's also done in silence so that we can form our intentions and place ourselves, our loved ones, our concerns on the paten and in the chalice to ask for transformation. We should be saying things like, Lord, transform me into Thee as thou wilt transform this bread and wine into thy body and blood. Make me another Christ. Once again, this is why the Mass is a recapitulation of the life of Christ, so that we can be transformed into Christ. Also, during the offertory prayers, they're very sacrificial in nature. So just as the Passover meal was celebrated or in Uh, they, 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 They went through the Passover meal together in the upper room first, and then they went to its fulfillment in the Mass. So the Passover meal is a type of the Mass. It's a prefigurement, and Jesus fulfilled it. Then he put it aside, and then he celebrated the first Mass. So also, the offertory acts as a type of the consecration that is coming very shortly. It's a psychological preparation for what is just ahead. After the Last Supper, Christ sang a hymn of praise before going to Calvary. Thus, we have the preface and the sanctus. Now we kneel down in adoration because we are soon to be at the foot of the cross on Calvary. But also, this is the time of the agony in the garden. The space between the sanctus and the consecration. The manner in which the crucifixion is represented is by the separate consecrations of the bread and the wine. The bread is consecrated to become the body of Christ and the wine transubstantiated into this precious blood. These are consecrated separately. This shows that we are now in the presence of a sacrifice which is the separation of body and blood. So now we're present on Calvary. We've made it to Calvary. This is Christ on the cross. And again, this is why the priest must hold his hands up. This is the cross. This is where all of our prayers are answered. But since the body and blood of Christ are resurrected, Heaven is also opened up to us. So at this point in the Mass, we're entering into the kingdom of heaven. We can think of it like this. There are two windows that open up to us at the Mass, at the second consecration, not the first, the second. One of the windows is open to Calvary. That time, that place of the most perfect sacrifice and prayer of all time. And then one opens to heaven. And this is a deep mystery. 
And this is why the words mysterium fidei are given at the second consecration. They're included in the words over the chalice. It is best to think of these two windows as being in a row. The window to Calvary opening in the front, the window to heaven in the back. Thus, all of heaven's light and glory is silhouetted. It silhouettes Calvary. So if we had the eyes of faith, we'd see the Calvary with light behind it flowing down. And this means that all of the graces that we receive from Mass come to us in the shape of the cross to help us conform ourselves to Christ and Him crucified. If you have ears, you can hear our blessed Lord crying out at this point, I thirst. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Our blessed mother is there. St. John is there. And say back to our Lord, then I thirst for you, Lord, help me. Our Lord also said when, it, when he is lifted up, he will draw all things to himself. Are we among those things? If not, beg him to be among those things. Say, Lord, I am something. Draw me to yourself. At the second consecration, it's also helpful to say something like, Eternal Father, I offer you the body, blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, for my mom, for my dad. Fill in the blank. Now here, all the motion is up. It's ascending. This is the time to adore after the second consecration, to thank God for all the graces received, to offer the Lamb of God for sinners, to make petition for all the things you need in life. At this time, the priest is face to face with God. He's there, close to God. Thus, he looks as much as possible at the host to keep vigil as the Gospels admonish us to do. Now, after the paternoster, the sacred host is broken to show that Christ is indeed the lamb that was slain. Our Lord has died and it's shown in the host. But then, almost immediately, a particle of the host is now put into the chalice, the froxio. And the priest says, Pax Domini sit semper vobiscum, the peace of the Lord be always with you. This is the resurrection without which there is no true peace. The body and blood are back together again. We've made it to the resurrection. The Lamb who was slain is alive again. Now we can say, Lamb of God, who takest away the sins of the world, have mercy on us and grant us peace. There is no peace without the resurrection. It's interesting to note that the priest speaks or sings aloud seven parts of the Mass after the consecration until he consumes the chalice. This is his keeping with our Lord's seven last words on the cross. And he does not turn around until after the sacrifice has been consummated. Now to complete the sacrifice, to complete a holocaust, it must be destroyed. It must be consummated. Thus, to complete the sacrifice of the cross begun at the double consecration at the mass, the priest must consume both species. Once he consumes the precious blood from the chalice, the windows to Calvary and heaven close. But the fruits of the sacrifice are now given in Holy Communion. But there's a special privilege offered to the priest. When he receives the host, he's on Calvary with Christ. Not only out there, but in there. And so the rubrics of the Mass tell the priest to pause and meditate on this profound union and moment When our Lord ascended into heaven, he commanded the apostles to go out into all the world and baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost. Thus the priest commands the people, eat de misa us, the church, it is sent. That's what the eat de misa est is, the sending of the church into the world. As our Lord ascended into heaven, finally he gave a blessing. Thus the priest then gives the blessing after the Ite Misa asks, not before, but after. 
So when Jesus is ascending, he gave his blessing. That comes after the Ite, and he disappeared. Now, there are many more things that could be said here, such as there are 33 crosses in the Mass for the number of years our Lord lived on earth. But I will leave them for your meditation. In the meantime, let us engage in the Mass. Love the Mass. Remember where you are at Mass. A place where our Lord is lifted up, drawing to himself all things to become like him. A place where we can draw close to God who draws close to us. The veil between heaven and earth is thinnest at the Mass. Oh, how good it is to be Catholic. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.